represents one face of the new India. But another vision of the future lies to the south, in Bangalore. In the 60s, Bangalore became the site of India's new space program, and the city rapidly established itself as a hub for scientific research and technological innovation. It's here at the gates of India's Silicon Valley that my rather surreal introduction to Bangalore begins. Within seconds, the chaos of India recedes, and we're amongst the manicured lawns of Indian IT giant, Infosys. For the first time on my trip, there's no background noise. The campus is a utopian oasis of calm, nestled in amongst the usual Indian madness. 24 square kilometers of futuristic dreamscape. The architecture is like something out of a sci-fi movie. Imagine the most expensive university campus in the world, and you're close. Then consider that this university has billions and billions of dollars pouring in every year, and is going out to recruit the very brightest graduates from all over the world, not just India. That's the scale and ambition of this place. So this is the Infosys campus in Electronic City in Bangalore. 15 kilometers from the main city. Uh, it's an 88 acre land parcel. Houses about 16,500 employees. Wow, that's big. This is the heritage building. This is the first building we had in the campus, in this campus. How old is uh, it? Started in 94. Okay. So it's about 12 years, but mm -hmm. it's, it's heritage because all the other buildings around have come up in the previous 12 years. So this so it's kind of relatively heritage. Re relatively heritage. 12 years, it's the yeah. oldest building. Right. Okay. So when I joined here, yeah, you know, we used to have a small gym over here, a small library here. Uh -huh. Now we have two large gyms. The largest gym in uh, Bangalore is uh, in this campus. Yeah. Right. But alongside this very 21st century vision of India, ancient cultural beliefs still retain a precarious foothold. This parcel of the land is actually on an uh, old cemetery. So we actually had to chase the spirits away. Did somebody suggest there were spirits there to start with? Or oh, because they... it was a cemetery. So we are, I don't think we entered the uh, remains, but you know, it was still a cymmetry. And so that was kind of... Cleared. Were they kind of, was it, were they reinterred yeah. somewhere else? Or? I, I think it's a pretty old cemetery, but I'm sure they'd have picked some bones here and there. <laughs> Ew. Okay. It's a kind of spiritual superhighway yeah. that runs in tandem with the tandem, kind of information yeah. superhighway. The yin and yang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even in high tech. High tech, right. Yeah. So this is their headquarters and... Welcome to the Orwellian landscape of Emphasis, where 12-year-old buildings are preserved for their heritage value, but ancestral graveyards aren't part of the corporate plan. Uh, supposed to reflect our openness and uh, transparency. Obviously, you can't see in, I suppose, but yeah, they might again. Yeah. It's pretty colourful. After half an hour with the director of communications, I had become fluent in Infospeak. I was allowed to explore on my own. Wow. Yeah. The Infosys campus is a remarkable site in its own right, but when you enter the Global Monitoring Center, commonly known as the Map Room, you can see how India's technological reinvention appears to be without limits. I've been told that Microsoft and Wall Street, amongst others, rely on this room to make sure that the world's computer systems keep running. Okay, well this is uh, the Map Room, this is the kind of nerve center of this place. Now there's a kind of very advanced kind of Mission Impossible style kind of system here, which is a hand recognition system, which obviously I can't get in. Maybe it's a dirt, you know, uh, monitor, which says, dirty hands, get out, and they don't let you in. They all look like they've got very clean hands after them. So. Now from here, you might be able to see there's a, there's a kind of map of America, um, that's one of the clients that we're looking at. And so people in here work in shifts. So as the kind of sun, you know, goes, around the earth. So people kind of finish up here, they move out, somebody who kind of deals with another part of the world comes in. And uh, th this is the kind of thing that, you know, when people have images of India, they don't think of this. You know, they, they, it's very convenient to st still think of the kind of, you know, the snake charmer and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, this is as much India as a snake charmer is now. My next stop is a building that looks like an enormous satellite dish. It's the unlikely venue of one of the many company canteens where I've been invited to lunch by a group of young employees. Over burgers and fries, complete with Coke, they tell me about how their aspirations have changed from those of their parents. 
There was one question actually I wanted to ask, which was just by a show of hands, which was uh, who around here has got to the point where they earn more than their parents did? That's extraordinary. That's all. Me too. Compared to our parents, you know, buying houses and all was something uh, unforeseen. They couldn't even imagine, at, you know, at, uh, maybe they would buy a house when they were, you know, uh, about to retire. Mm -hmm. But now with that disposable income, you know, a lot of people are going in for uh, houses as future investment and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's for tax saving also. My dad will invariably remind me of the fact when I buy a lot of shoes that he used to go bare feet to college. Oh, and really? He used to walk a kilometer to, you know, to go to college and he always, invariably, you know, it's automatic, you know, I buy a pair of shoes and he says, no, just spend the money. <laughs> what about yours? My parents don't say anything. They say, go enjoy yourself. <laughs> I like I your parents. Know. Do you believe that? Does anybody? It must be like, oh, initially it was more like, uh, you're buying ready-made clothes. Can't you just get them stitched? <laughs> really? Was like, See, that's okay. interesting because in, in the West it would be the other way around. To have something tailored costs much more than the ready-made stuff. <laughs> so you got it the other way around. Yeah. So. <laughs> They're very appalled at the thought of, you know, oh my God, you're spending a credit card, how are you going to pay it off? And, you know, the thought of taking a loan or a mortgage or uh, having a credit card, going to the ATM, is something which is very alien, you know. Do you think you're now regarded as a little more cool? A little more hip, a little more happening, a little bit, <laughs> little bit chat <laughs> than you were? It's just but we are treated more as world citizens now rather than those sadhus that we were thought of, snake charmers. <laughs> <laughs> they know that, okay, there is something, you know, some, some technology, some IT, which these people know. They know something, they are not mm -hmm. snake charmers. So, which is a big change. But you do have a snake charmer in the family somewhere, don't you? <laughs> no. Uh, good, 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 good. I'm glad you...